let's apply this to um, things in life. The first thing I showed you is the thing of one in a relatively short period of time is automobiles. Automobiles are finance, and you can get rid of those guys in a relatively short period of time if you think. Now, we do use automobiles. You all agree? I think they're wonderful, regardless of what our boy has to say. <clears throat> now, there's seven ways of having use of an automobile during lifetime, but two won't work, Nick. Nate? Nate? They won't work. Theft won't work, will really. mm -hmm. They're going to catch you. <laughs> you won't work either, regardless of what your teenage son thinks. <laughs> he might get one, but that's the end of the deal, right? Yeah, you own your own boy. Now, uh, there are five legitimate methods, and so we're going to be talking about replacing uh, the Chevrolet Malibu uh, over a 44 year period of time, 11 different automobiles, replacing one every four years. Now, if you do that uh, through leases, you'll spend this kind of money. And then you're going to be on your feet at the end of the uh, last lease. Now, uh, this is kind of a nebulous figure. We've got to use reason here uh, to uh, adjust our perspective. This one you can uh, calculate pretty easily. Uh, that's just 260 a month, we'll say, times the number of months. But uh, uh, logic is going to tell you that uh, this is going to be larger than this. Because if you're going to lease, you got to lease to an owner, and the owner is not a fool. Now, this is a guy that's been listed to Dave Ramsey here. He pays cash for his, and he's very smug. Well, I don't mess with leasing. I don't mess with financing. I pay cash. Yes, but to do so, uh, he's got to save up money and pay cash. Save up money and pay cash. Save up money and pay cash. Now, he's got to go the first four years without the car. And he keeps killing the goose that lays the golden egg. He's not capitalizing a business for real. Now, do y'all know that in the USA that we've already covered 90% of the American public? So, sure. I hear you. Yep. These are two examples of uh, what can be done by alternate methods. Uh, these are twin girls, they're 21 years old. And they say that, uh, you know, uh, this guy saved up money for four years every, uh, every uh, time he bought a car. Uh, they, he didn't, they didn't capitalize. Uh, these twin sisters say, we've got to capitalize by paying them, say, seven years at a higher volume than what you'd have to pay here for four years. Capital is required. Now, this girl says she's going to do it through CDs. Now, these CDs that I'm talking about here, uh, uh, they're earning a 5.5% interest. Now, the time I drew this up, uh, 5 was uh, attainable in a few places, but that was all. But being the real sport that I am, I use 5.5, I want to be generous. Now, this is what's actually happening, Steve. Uh, the girls put monthly money uh, into a savings account, and somebody else is buying. Now, once a year, CD Sister uh, checks out uh, $5,000 out of a savings account, goes across the hall, buys a CD earning five and a half, uh, then she does that for seven years. Now, if you show me somebody that does that for seven years, I'll show you somebody where Parkinson's is not one of them. Hmm? Well, what's she going to run into then? Willie Sutton. <clears throat> Hard to The tax, yeah, no, no, the tax man. You can't come back before Willie Sutton. You come back after Willie. The rest of it is just conversation. And so that would be 4% net. Now, uh, at the end of uh, seven years, y'all got this in the book. Uh, you got this on page 45. 
Uh, she's got $41,071 after Willie Sutton stole in CD. Now, she's ready to go buy her first car. Now, if that girl is stupid enough to let the car dealer know she got $41,000 in uh, net dollars, what is the car dealer going to say to her? You don't need to be looking at no uh, Chevrolet uh, uh, Malibu. You need to go next door to our other dealership, and they got a five series Beamer there, uh, like Float uh, Charbo, Charbo, right? And you look so good driving a five series Beamer. Now that forty-one thousand won't do, it. but the extra fifteen thousand. We have the best finance plan in town. That's what you should buy. Now, if that girl is that stupid, uh, she's going to have this on the grand scale. But she's a smart girl, boss. She wears blue jeans and sneakers down to the car dealer. And she takes her old seven year old Malibu that she bought from the same dealership and she tells that uh, car dealer, uh, the salesman, Rella. I'm going to trade my Malibu. Now, this is the equipment I want. Now, tell me how much money I got to come up with. And he says, you need 10550 plus your old, old automobile. Now, where did I get that 10550 with? Mary's Audi 100 would cost $2,500 a year. And you bought to buy four years times 2500 in your head. Um, We'll just throw another 550 in there to make it easy. Work backwards to 260 a month. That's why I did it. All right. So uh, she gets back in the old car, goes back down to the bank, checks out 10550 uh, goes back to the dealership, turns into money in the car. She's driving home, smiling from ear to ear, uh, Curtis. She's finally achieved her goal. She'll never see another finance company nor a bank. She's handling her herself. She's driving home. Conscience gets her. She says, I need to start a repayment plan. Otherwise, I'm still in peace. Right? Okay. She makes a 180 in the street. No cars coming, no cops watching. She wants to get back to the uh, car dealer of the bike as fast as again to check out 3030 uh, out of her savings account and buys another CD. She's playing honest bike, right? Now, she does some reasoning. She says, if I did monthly, 260 a month, times 12 months, that's 3120. But I learned from, uh, uh, from uh, Richard that if I pay annually, I get a 6% discount. So, I'm going to pay annually. So, she gets 3030 out of her savings account, buys a new CD every year. Every four years, she gets a new car. Now, she gets down here to this point, she's got $258,000 in uh, CDs after taxes. Net. Now, she wants income. She's drawing out 50000 a year income tax-free. She's just recovering what she put in the policy. You see, the residual is still earning for that. She better not live very long. No. Five years and eight months she is. I've lived. Now, her stupid sister didn't do that. Her stupid sister went to see Richard and uh, bought life insurance. And if you go to the next page there, you'll see what she bought. Uh, you'll see that uh, she bought a base premium of 3030 and she paid a 1970 paid a position right. Now, she did that for seven years, and uh, uh, then she used dividends. Now, no loan, no loan, none. Dividends to buy the car. Now, every four years, she gets a, uh, oh, she, she drops the PA rider, Nate. 
She's still going to pay the 33, just like her sister is paying 3030 for CDs. Do we agree we have cash flow that's a number? <laughs> All right. Now, when she gets down that to uh, year uh, 51, she's 72, and that's 10 years younger than Mary, and so she's still a child. Now, uh, you know she's got $946,000 in cash? No, no, $964,000. A little dyslexia there. Did you all hear about the dyslectic atheist, uh, Mark? No, I <laughs> He said there is no dog. <laughs> 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 and Curtis and I was in Iowa a number of years ago. I learned about the dyslectic farmer. He got a John Deere letter from his sweetheart. <laughs> She's got $964,000 in the cash budget. Now let's graph that. Good Lord. Huh? Yeah. Now she wants income. $50,000 tax free as long as she lives. What happened here was she withdrew dividends to pay cost basis and then she made loans. That's not taxable. And she dies at age 85 just for the heck of it. She has drawn out $650,000, still delivers $1.365 million to the next generation so that I have to reinvent the wheel. Well, here's these life insurance folks that won't think. And they say, those illustrations there, those are years ago, it dividends, uh, rates, and so forth, or low, therefore those illustrations are not valid today. Well, how about those uh, CD rates there, net and full? What you getting on your CDs now? Huh? They're not valid either. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but the difference is always there, Mark. It makes no difference at all. But they are totally hooked on the idea of numbers. Numbers mean everything to these people. Uh, they can't reason things out. Remember, this is a, a, imagination, reason, logic, and prophecy. And so, the difference is always there. The name of the game is the learning how to be your own banker. And how are we doing now, Jason? 40 minutes. Huh? 40 minutes. 40? Yeah. <laughs> Golly, I'm, uh, I've got plenty of time. I, I'm nice. <laughs> now, let's consider why is all this true? Uh, Shakespeare gave us a clue years ago, Jesse. Uh, he said, all the world is a stage, and all the people are actors thereon. Well, taking a clue from him, I say, when it comes to the subject of finance, frankly, most folks don't understand the point. Yeah, but worse than that, they get the characters in the play mixed up. So let's think about it. Uh, let's compare uh, a bank, conventional bank owner and a life insurance policy owner. Now, you can't run a uh, conventional bank without hired help. It's impossible. You can't run a life insurance company without hired help. It's impossible. Banks have to lend money. Life insurance companies have to lend money. The stockholder at the bank gets uh, dividends. Y'all saw my dividends, didn't you? Just ten times the premium, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> now, the CD holder gets interest at the bank. I got interest, you saw that guaranteed cash value that every year. Now, both activities require borrowers and hired help, so they wash each other out. Huh? Only thing at issue, how earnings are allocated. The CD holder gets interest. The stockholder gets dividends. I got both of them, didn't I? That's all there is to it. 